Southampton have been hit for nine goals in a single Premier League game for two consecutive seasons now. Last season it was Leicester City, this season Manchester United. I think it's definitely time we step in as manager and try and fix the situation. I mean, Southampton fans can't be dealing with any more of these humiliations. To be fair to Southampton, maybe that result against Man United was a one-off because they're sitting pretty comfortable 12th in the Premier League at the moment. But our objective in this video is fixing Southampton, making them the best team in England and hopefully winning the Champions League. So sit back and relax and maybe get some snacks as well because this challenge is going to take us a fair bit, probably five seasons or more, as we try and take this team to the top of England. If you're excited for today's Fixing Southampton Challenge, I'd really appreciate if you could spare a second to drop a like on the video. It helps with the channel, it helps with the YouTube algorithm as well. Subscribe if you are new around here for daily FIFA 21 career mode content. And also let me know what team we should fix next week. We're keeping the rules pretty simple for this one. Winning the Champions League is the ultimate ultimate goal of this challenge. We can make any transfers required. We've got to simulate every single game. But of course, if we reach that Champions League final, that is a game we have to play to complete the challenge. We're also going to track the silverware we win over the course of this challenge. So it should be fun tracking all the trophies, hopefully that we win. You guys have wanted me to take charge of a team that doesn't have incredible financial backing or a group of incredible players. So Southampton fits that bill and taking this team to the top is going to be a lot of fun. Anyways, let's start off by taking a look in the team we've got at our disposal. I'm definitely going to stick with the 4-4-2 for this one, just keeping things simple. Danny Ings is going to be absolutely massive for us in this series. He's only 27, so he can give us definitely a few good years, and he's our highest rated player. James Ward-Prowse as well, another one of them top talents in the team. Captain as well, he's going to be vital. We've got Nathan Redman, you can expect some goals from him. Bednarek in the back is a solid centre-back, he's pretty young as well. We've got Ryan Bertrand in the team, McCarthy in goal. The team is decent, man. Theo Walcott is in there as well as a good backup option. So we've got a decent first team, but I think we need a lot of work to make this team even finish top 10 in the first season. A few players here, you know, that I'm probably looking to offload to get some extra cash, but we've got a lot of work to do. Now, as I said, we don't have an incredible financial backing here at Southampton. We've got about 30 million to spend, a good wage budget, so we can definitely do some good business. I think my objective for season one is to finish in the top 10 and establish a solid base or foundation for our team. That's the goal. Let's now make some signings. Look at this, boys. Even before we start signing players, we've got offers for two of our most important players. No way am I selling Ward Prowse or even Danny Ings for that matter. To save ourselves from all the annoying emails, let's block all all offers for Ings and of course Ward Prowse. Here we go boys, our first signing has been secured and it's Dragoski for 9 million. I told you man, this season is all about building a good foundation and that starts with having a top goalkeeper. So signing the 22 year old for about 9 million just seems like the perfect bet, especially since all our keepers are above the age of 30. So He's going to be a big addition to this team. Some more depth in the midfield as we've signed Sean Longstaff for 7 million from Newcastle United. Weakening a fellow Premier League club as well as bringing in a top tier talent. 73 rated. He's only 22. I think this is a great signing that we've just made. For just 9 million, I was able to snag Rafael Leao from AC Milan. I mean, I couldn't say no to an offer like this. 9 million for Leao, who we know is going to be a top talent in the future. And he's going to be valued very highly. Getting a young striker, I think, is the best bet because forwards are the most expensive. We don't have unlimited funds. So getting hold of Leao this early on, I think, is going to be key for us. He's got some incredible stats already. And just 9 million for him seems like a brilliant deal. Apart from all the incoming transfers, I think we've done a good job of selling a few of the old players and generating some extra revenue. And that means we still have a bit of money left to potentially make one or even two more signings. This is probably our biggest signing of this save already. We've signed Callum hudson Adoy from Chelsea for about 13 million, a bargain I feel. And he looks insane. Only 74 rated at the moment, but I'm, I'm sure he's going to go high up in his overall very soon. We've got to bring in some young blood and already this season we've done that. I think I'm done with my transfers for this window. I'm really happy with the business we've done. Longstaff, hudson Adoy, all very good signing. Dragoski as well and Rafael Leao. So we've done some great business and now all that's left is simming on till January to see how the team's performing. We've got about 12 million left in cash which we will use in January but for now I'm happy with the team. Let's keep pushing. So we're in January, halfway through the season. And tell you what, this is not bad at all. We're 10th in the Premier League. This is way more than I expected, I'm not going to lie. I thought we were going to be 14th, 15th because we made investments in a lot of young players and not established players. But 
It's worked out well so far. We do have a negative goal difference, though. Hopefully, that'll be fixed. 24 points at the moment, 10th in the Prem. I'll absolutely take that. Unfortunately, we did get knocked out by Watford in the early rounds of the Carabao Cup, but to be fair, this season, I'd rather just focus on the Prem. In other news, because of signing Callum Hudson-Odoi, Walcott was barely getting any playing time, so Everton recalled him. Don't really care, because Callum Hudson-Odoi is the future. I think I've just pulled off one of the most difficult transfers I've ever done. Alex Centeles from UD Almeria for 17.3 million. We needed a left back, because Ryan Bertrand was... Dipping in his overall really fast, so he seemed like the perfect fit. Only 21, good potential. 17.3 million is a bit expensive, but fullbacks are pretty expensive on FIFA, so we had to pay up. And this is why this deal was so difficult. I mean, look at the state of this. Our budget is gone. We've got barely any money left. And I guess we're not making any more signings. Let's quickly put him into the setup. This is going to be our team until the end of the season. And let's hope we can finish higher up in the table. So we haven't really had a strong second half of the season because we end up finishing 14th in the Premier League. But ultimately, we avoid relegation. As I said, this first season is all about building a good foundation which I think we've done. Next season, we'll push for a higher finish. By the way, it's Liverpool who end up winning the Premier League. I'm not surprised at all. City coming in second place. Arsenal finishing fourth. What a surprise. Just like the Carabao Cup, we also got knocked out in the early rounds of the FA Cup, this time to Manchester City. Is anyone surprised that Danny Ings is our top goal scorer with 17 goals for the season? James Ward-Prowse coming in with 12, which is impressive. Assist-wise, it is Nathan Redmond, our top assister for the season. Also, Nathan Redmond's 10 assists gets him the top assisted award in the Premier League, so he's been our standout player this season. An okayish start to our first season in this fixing Southampton challenge. Let's now push on to season two. Season two begins, and our team is definitely looking a lot stronger than what we started out with, so that is awesome. We've got Callum Hudson Adoy, we've got Danny Ings up top, and Shea Adams, Longstaff, and Ward Prowse in the midfield. Bednarek and Salisu is our backline, who is now, by the way, 78 rated, so that's awesome. A lot of overall upgrades from last season, but still, I think we can see some faster progress, especially with our goalkeeper. I want him to hit 80 overall this season, but the team is looking good for season two. Good backup options as well, like Rafael Leao, Genepo, Lemina as well, who's just returned from his loan spell. Definitely going to use him as a backup option this season. We've got Gunn as our backup keeper for this season. And yeah, the team is looking solid. A lot of players who have returned from their loan spell that we're probably looking to sell, but I'm ready for season two. We're getting about 36 million in the bank for this season. Not bad at all. We could definitely make some good signings with that money. So our first signing of the season, done and dusted. Jamal Lewis from Newcastle, 15 million. Yep, we're spending big money on another left back. That's because Bertrand has left the club. And it just makes sense to bring in another left back for squad depth purposes. Plus, he's good enough to compete with centerless, probably even better. So, more depth for our back line is always going to be better. Here we go. We've made our biggest signing of this challenge so far. Renato Sanchez to Southampton is a done deal. For 30 million, it just seemed like a deal we had to do. He's the kind of player you look to build your team around. Plus, in a 4 4 2, you need two really, really good midfielders Renato and James Ward Prowse together would just be unbelievable. So we've signed him for 30 million. He's already 80 rated. He's going to be amazing for us in the middle of the park. Both Renato Sanchez and Jamal Lewis go right in the first 11. The team is looking a lot more balanced with those signings. Now we do have money left, about 9 million, but I guess we'll keep that for the January transfer window. This is our team. The goal this season is to finish in maybe the top half of the table. Let's see if we can pull it off with this side. Okay, guys, I have no idea what's happening, but somehow we find ourselves sixth in the Premier League halfway through the season. Like, what's happened? We finished 14th last season. Such a big improvement with just a couple of signings. I've absolutely no idea what's happening, but I'm loving it. Sixth in the Premier League, come on. Okay, so this kind of explains that. I mean, look at the overall growth of most of our players. Renato has gone up, Ward Prowse continues to grow up, Hudson Adoy has gone up massively, Rafael Leao as well, Dragoski. The team is improving every time we simulate through weeks, and it's going pretty well. So, no wonder we're sixth in the Prem. Let's hope we can keep this up. I think last season we were 10th in the Premier League at the start of the first half of the season, but then we dropped down to 14th. Let's hope that won't happen this time around. We're starting off the January window by selling a few players like Ibrahima Diallo. I've barely used him and Vestergaard as well. This is an interesting one because now that we have only three centre-backs at the club, you guessed it, we're looking to bring in another centre-back, preferably someone above the overall of 80. 
26 million to make that happen. Let's get it done. Probably the only signing we're making in January and it's a big one. Jonathan Ta has been signed. We needed a more reliable centre-back option than Vestergaard who was getting really old. So 19.4 million for Jonathan Ta is what we are working with. 80 rated a good overall to start things off but he's still got potential to improve. Great stats all round. 6 foot 5. He's going to be an absolute unit at the back. And I think that's our business done for season 2. We're going to now simulate until the end of the season and let's see how high up we can finish in the Premier League. Okay, guys, what on earth has happened here? We've actually beaten Manchester United 6-0 away from home. Is that even a thing? Has this actually happened? We've literally played the Uno reverse card on Man United and we've humiliated them. Well, that's awesome. So at the end of season two, we finish eighth in the Premier League, which I think is phenomenal progress, especially considering we were 14th last season. Not bad at all, just a point off Wolves. Five points off Chelsea, a positive goal difference as well this season. Danny Ings, once again, top goal scorer for us with 18 this season. 15 of them coming in the Prem. She Adams scored a fair few. We had Hudson Odoi score 12 for us. Renato with incredible stats. Look at those assists as well. I'm so glad we signed him. Rafael Leao had a tough one because of injuries, but he still scored 10. Ward Prowse again, a solid season. Our captain, 12 assists and 9 goals. But guys, the season isn't done yet. We've somehow got ourselves into the FA Cup final. I mean, look at the teams we were facing up until this point. Everton were like the biggest team we faced. We got really lucky with the draw. We're here now. Chance to win a trophy. Let's hopefully get this done. The scenes, boys, if we can win the FA Cup. Come on, Southampton versus Manchester City. And well, no trophy for us just yet. But to be fair, I don't think we deserve it this early on in this challenge. It's going to take some time. A 3-0 defeat to City. That's how season 2 ends, but a very decent season. Let's push on to season 3. Time to kick off season 3 and well, the team is looking absolutely fantastic. Most of the players in the setup are over the overall of 80. We've built a great foundation. This season, I want to push for the highest spot in the Premier League. Maybe even trying to go for a top 4 spot. 61 million to kick things off, which is absolutely phenomenal. I think I've got a good idea of what I want to do with this money this season. We're starting off the season with the bangers. Joe Gomez has just signed for Southampton. This, I think, is our most expensive signing. I've realized that if we want to win trophies, we need an incredible backline. And that starts with bringing as many high-rated players as possible. Joe Gomez being one of them, 84 rated. We've signed him for 44 million, which is even under his valuation. I don't know how we pull this off, but this is a phenomenal signing. And he's going to go right into our team. A bit of a different approach this season in terms of signings. We just made that one mega signing in Joe Gomez. We'll keep the rest of the cash that we've got, which is decent. About 25 million for Jan. But if in case we need to make more improvements, I trust this team. I'm ready for this season. Let's see how we fare. Halfway through the season in the Premier League and we're actually second. Now, this, this has got to be some sort of an error. How have we pulled this off? We haven't lost a single game so far in the Premier League. 49 points. After 21 games, we're three behind Liverpool. This is actually insane. This might be a season where we actually end up winning some silverware. And of course, qualify for Champions League football. That is our goal. Winning the league title, I think it's a bit far from here still. We'll see how things go. No wonder we're killing it in the Premier League. Hudson Adoy has stepped up big time for us this season. 13 goals for him in the Prem. And assist wise, Renato Sanchez continues to perform with 10 assists this season. Since we're doing so well already, I just feel like it's not necessary to make any signings in January. Yeah, we do have money to potentially bring in a few players, but I feel like at this point, with how our team is set up, we'll need more money to bring in quality. Otherwise, we'll just be wasting money on random signings. So, no more signings in January. We'll just sim until the end and see if we can get some silverware this season. For the second time in this challenge, we've made a cup final. This time, it's the Carabao Cup final as we take on Manchester United. Season 3, we've got a chance to win a trophy. Last season, Man City just dismantled us in the FA Cup final. This time, I want to beat Man United. It's time for the Carabao Cup final. Can we beat Manchester United in this one? Come on, let's win a trophy, our first of this challenge. There you go, boys. A 3-0 win in the final. Ward Prowse scored as well for us. Hudson Adoy and Shea Adams adding to it. Let's freaking go. We've won the Carabao Cup. Well, the Carabao Cup looks fantastic in our trophy cabinet. Season 3 comes to an end and we finish on 93 points, but we somehow end up not winning the league. How brutal is that? Liverpool with 101 points this season. Wow. 98 is what they've achieved. We've just lost one game this season. 
And yeah, five points off uh, Liverpool. We were so far ahead of Man City. It's crazy. 13 points ahead of them. But what a season. Finishing second in three seasons with Southampton is a tremendous achievement, boys. Honestly, Hudson Adoy was our top scorer with 19. Danny Ings came in with 16. Shea Adams with 15 as well. Assist wise, Renato Sanchez pretty close to Millie Savage for that top assisted award. Nathan Redmond was involved. Kyle Walker Peters as well. Our overall top scorer this season was Hudson Adoy, who is now. 85 rated trust me signing him was the best decision we could have made Danny Ings came in with 20 goals as well Shea Adams with 18 Renato with 12 Ward Prowse with 10 and so on assist wise again Renato was key but guys our season isn't done yet we've got another FA Cup final this time we're up against Liverpool let's make it two trophies for the season we've won the Carabao Cup this season can we win the FA Cup as well Liverpool is going to be no easy task 5-4 on penalties. Oh my god, we've done it. We've won the FA Cup. This was absolutely ridiculous. Who scored for us in normal time? I don't think we can find that out, but... Or maybe we can. I want to take a look. Ing scored for us once. We had Ward Prowse scoring for us and Shea Adams. Wow, this was nuts. So we end off the season finishing second in the Premier League, winning both the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. We're adding both of them trophies to our trophy cabinet, but it's now time to push towards Season 4, where we're looking for more major trophies. Season 4 begins, and could this be the season where we win the Champions League? Funnily enough, it's going to be the first season we're even involved in this competition, but looking at our team, I wouldn't be surprised if we go far in the competition, because we've got an amazing midfield, a great backline, a good attack, but I think we need to make a few improvements. Our bench is solid, we've got great backup options, We've got the most balanced squad we've ever had in this challenge and maybe this is the season where we can go for the big trophies, the Prem and the Champions League. Let's hope so. And it's absolutely fantastic to see the board backing us. 142 million to spend. Let's freaking go. I told you man, we're going for it all this season and that's why I'm spending big money on established players so that we can improve our team for this season itself. We're not signing youngsters anymore, we're going for the big dogs. Sadio Mane is back at Southampton, what a freaking signing. I know he's 31 but he's definitely going to give us a fantastic season. He's 89 rated, our probably a highest rated player now. This is going to be tremendous and let's hope he can guide his former club Southampton to Champions League glory or even Premier League glory for that matter this season. A mega signing for about 66.8 million and we're not stopping here. So we're kicking off the season with a chance to win a trophy as we take on Liverpool in the Community Shield final. We beat them in the FA Cup final. Let's see if we can beat them in the Community Shield final. No, we can't. So... We're going to stick with two trophies so far in this challenge. No Community Shield final for us. Just sold Michael Obafemi because his overall was 75. He wasn't really growing all that much. And that means we're on the hunt for another striker. And we're not messing about, boys. It's time to make a phenomenal striker signing. Oh boy, look at this for a signing. Harry Kane is now a Southampton player. We've pulled this one off. You know what? We actually got a bargain for this. We only had to pay 67.5 million for him, which was his valuation. Usually it'd take maybe like 90 million to sign Kane, maybe even more. But because he's out with an ACL injury and he'll be back in like a month, I got a good bargain deal for him. Plus, a 90 rated striker to partner Danny Ings up top. Things you do love to see. So we've made it happen. And I think with this signing, we're ready. The transfer window is shut. We're stuck with this team until January. In fact, I don't even see us making any more signings now. I think this team is ready to win titles this season. And I definitely think we've got a good shot at winning the Champions League because our squad is stacked. Every player from midfield to attack is above the overall of 85. It's just nuts. And we've also got incredible backup options. An 83-rated keeper in Trakowski. We're looking solid, man. This is the season. We're going for it all. In season four, we're trying to wrap things up. This is, by the way, the first season we're involved in the Champions League. So let's see the group we're gonna be in for this season. It's a fairly easy group. Lazio, Monaco and Shakhtar. We should be able to top this one. Halfway through the season and this is genuinely incredible. We're top of the league with 58 points. I told you, man, with the signings we've made, this is the freaking season for us to win the Premier League. Oh my God. Liverpool struggling in 7th as well. Remember, they were competing at the very top with us last season. 
For once, we make them the feeder club by signing Mane from them and look at them struggle. That's hilarious. But we're top of the league. This is our chance to win the Prem. In other news, we did get knocked out in the early rounds of the Carabao Cup. But since we've won this already once in this challenge, don't really care. Now, we have managed to top our Champions League group, which is awesome to see. And we've drawn Inter Milan in the round of 16. Come on. Now, since we're doing so well already this season, it just doesn't make sense to make any more signings. Besides that, we don't have the cash to do so. So... This is the squad that's going to hopefully guide us to a Champions League final. I'm ready, man. Let's sim until the end and see if we can make it. First leg for us against Inter Milan. Champions League round of 16. It's crazy how we're already in the knockout stages for the first time that we're in the Champions League. But that's how good the team is that we've built. So we're ready for this one, boys. Let's see if we can get a good result away from home. A one-all draw interesting but the second leg will be played at home so i think we've got a good chance it's time for the big second leg against inter milan come on let's beat them and make it to the quarterfinals of the champions league and we've done it with ease danny engs and rafael leao scoring the goals for us we're through to the quarters our luck is in this season in the champions league because we've received another fairly favorable draw against rb leipzig i think we're favorites for this one Yo, I think this is it. This is the season we win the Champions League. Here we go. Let's try and get the result against RB Leipzig. First leg and I told you, man, this is the season we're going to win the Champions League. We've whipped them apart 3-0. The second leg was just a formality as we see the game out. 1-0, 4-0 on aggregate against Leipzig. But in the semi-finals, I think we've met our match. It is Bayern Munich, the team we're facing. Oh God, is this going to be painful. But if we can somehow get past them... Atleti or Dortmund, I think we'll be favourites against either one of those two teams. Here goes nothing boys, Southampton versus Bayern. A strong result though in the first leg could help us out massively. Can we get it done against Bayern? I think we just have Mane scoring the winner. First leg 3-2. Of course, they've got a couple of away goals, so nothing's decided just yet. Even a draw is enough to send us through to the Champions League final. Can we at least get that against Bayern at the Allianz? We can. Signing Sadio Mane was a big, awesome decision that we made because he scored in both legs. 1-1. One, one. And we've made it to the Champions League final. So we face Atletico in the final of the Champions League. We've got a chance to wrap up this fixing Southampton challenge in this season itself. Hopefully we'll get it done. The Premier League season has come to an end. And oh my god was it record breaking for us. 95 points. And this time Liverpool couldn't step up to the challenge. We won the league. We scored over 103 goals. Wonder why. I'm sure Kane and Mane will have a hand in that. But 11 points above Man City. Wow, this is unbelievable. And well, with that, we add the Premier League trophy as well to our trophy cabinet. That's now three trophies we've won over the course of these four seasons and maybe more to come. I'm absolutely not surprised that Harry Kane scored 33 goals in 33 games to win the Golden Boot in the Prem. Signing him is the reason why we're in this situation. What a transfer that was. Assist-wise, do we have anyone in there? Ward Prowse and Sanchez, both with 11. Guess what, guys? We've got a chance to win another trophy. In fact, we've got a chance to win a treble this season. We take on Spurs in the FA Cup final. Come on, boys. Let's get the FA Cup final in the bag. That'd be our second FA Cup of this challenge. Let's make it happen against Spurs. It's a 1-0 win. Danny Ings scoring the winner. Let's freaking go. The FA Cup has been added to our trophy cabinet. It's now just the Champions League trophy that remains. Oh my god. Harry Kane's stats are just nuts. 43 goals. Renato Sanchez, to be fair, has got unbelievable stats as well. 25 on it for his name. Hudson Odoi with 19. Mane with 19. Danny Ings with 18. Just tremendous stats all round. Assist wise, Renato top assister. Ward Prowse coming close. It's now time, guys, for the big final. It's Atletico Madrid versus Southampton. A chance for us to wrap up this fixing Southampton challenge. Let's get it done. This is how I'm lining up my team. We're sticking with the 4-4-2. To be fair, Atletico with the 4-4-2 formation as well. Kane and Ings up top. We've got Mane, Sanchez, Watt Prowse, and Hudson Adoy forming our midfield. Kyle Walker, Peters, and Jamal Lewis is our fullbacks. Bednarek and Joe Gomez at the back with Rakowski in goal. That's the Southampton team we're running with. It's now time to face Atletico in the final. Let's kick the game off. I'm actually so excited to play a game with this insane team that we've built because I've spent the last, what, 
seven or eight hours grinding my way to this Champions League final. Let's see how incredible is this team that we've built. One thing I do like about this team that we've built, a lot of the core players are still involved here, like Bednarek, Ward Prowse, Danny Ings, Kyle Walker-Peters. I think we've done a good job based around that. Oh, here we go on the attack, and it's Joe Gomez firing the ball forward and now finds hudson Adoy. Here he goes, Callum hudson Adoy. 1v1, difficult angle, goes for goal though. And that's a sensational finish from Callum hudson Adoy in the Champions League final. 13 minutes in, we've managed to get the lead. The dream start for us as Southampton are in the lead in the Champions League final. Only in FIFA can this happen, but we've pulled it off. Callum hudson Adoy. By the way, it was Joe Gomez providing the assist for that one, but sensational finish right there from hudson Adoy. We're 1-0 up. Ja Felix, oh, that he looks in behind for calvert and That's a big save from Dragoski. We needed that from him. Giving Atleti the goal back immediately would have been terrible because... Yeah, it's Atletico Madrid. We don't want to give them any space at all. 1-0 up Southampton, but the danger is still on from a corner. Calvert-Lewin wins that, but can we get it away? We struggle to It's Jimenez and Kane helping out defensively. Good to see. João Felix looking in behind for Koke, trying to get the shot off, but Joe Gomez put him off balance. And that prevented him from getting a good shot off. That's how good Joe Gomez has been in this final. Finds Kane. Back for Renato, back to Harry Kane, can he get in behind, he's got the strength, Kane shoots, but Jan Oblak with a huge save. 2-0 up against Atleti would have been the dream after 30 minutes, because that would force Atletico to leave more spaces behind, but Jan Oblak didn't allow that to happen. Ward-Prowse just opened up a bit of space, going for that finesse shot. You never know, man, some of them do end up in the back of the net, but this time, it was way above the crossbar. Correa now looks for Felix. Looks inside for Calvert-Lewin. That first touch was awful from Calvert-Lewin and that could help start a counter-attack for us as Kane. Looks for Renato. Finds Sadio Mane who's just about kept himself on and we know how quick Sadio is but he's not that quick is he? How did he get caught up so easily there? I'm surprised. This time I'm taking the corner short for Ward-Prowse maybe to conjure up a moment of magic here. Still Ward-Prowse going for goal. Difficult angle. Rebound. Bang! Whoa, that's such a lucky goal to get, but I'll absolutely take it. Sadio Mane scoring in a Champions League final for Southampton. That is unbelievable. He's copied a bit of Firmino there with the celebration, but 2 it up against Atletico before halftime. Just the dream, man. Now Atletico are going to be in a weird spot. They're going to have to attack a lot more in the second half, and that's going to be good for us because we're going to hit them on the break again and again and again. Half time and we're in the dream scenario right now. Second half, more of this, and we'll end up winning the Champions League. Now it's Awar. Oh, that's a good pass in for Korea again. Oh, Dragoski saves that. We get a bit lucky. Calvert-Lewin, how did he not end up scoring that? Who that was intense. Looking for Danny Ings. Good pass. Here's Danny Ings in a Champions League final. Cuts it back for Mane, that was kind of unnecessary, but we're still working the ball around the Atletico defense. Still Ward-Prowse, could look for passing options here. Oh, he's done his man, brilliantly. Ah, oh, come on, the final challenge came in there from the defender. Would have loved to see an epic moment coming from Ward-Prowse in a final like this. Looks for Sadio Mane now, sees James Ward-Prowse. A cross back in for Harry Kane. Oh, Danny Ings gets the free chance to score and he's done it. Danny Ings has scored in the Champions League final. And this is a picture-perfect moment because a player who was there from the very start of this challenge scores possibly our final goal of this challenge as well. Danny Ings, right place, right time. We've had our epic moment for Danny Ings and even Ward Prowse because that was a good delivery from him. We've done it, boys. It's 3-0 and I think the game is sorted. Oh, that's a good pass for Calvert-Lewin. Oh, we can't get the clean sheet, boys. We've given away a goal for Atletico, but we're 12 minutes left or 11 minutes left, actually. There's no coming back for them. And there you have it, guys. The game has come to an end. Southampton have won the Champions League. Four seasons of hard work and well, we've pulled it off. Champions League winners. This season, in fact, we won the treble, the FA Cup the Prem and of course now the Champions League. Let's freaking go. And look at this boys, we've added the Champions League to our cabinet. We've now got the Champions League in here, the Premier League, the Carabao Cup and a couple of FA Cup trophies. That's five trophies over the span of four seasons. Incredible. Oh my god, I accidentally skipped the trophy celebrations. I'm such an idiot. Oh my god. Huh. Anyways, we've seen it way too many times, so I guess it's fine. But uh, I've still got it. I wanted to see James Ward-Prowse lift that trophy at the end. But oh well, he's done it. Uh, in, in a way, he's still done it. So that's it for today's video. Fixing Southampton. This was probably the most fun I've had on a fixing challenge because we took a team that are... 
pretty terrible and made them incredible. So it was a lot of fun. Let me know in the comments section what team we should try and fix next week. And if you've enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate if you could spare a second and drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new around here and well, I'll catch you all next time.